Uh, my dear students of third year zoology honors, Ramjas Kovas, uh, Department of Zoology, University of Delhi. Today we are trying to uncover a very interesting dynamics of the animal behavior, that is how a particular animal orient itself to get or to maximize its potential to get an ambient environmental conditions. So in this context, today we will be talking about the kinetic activity, that is the movement of the animal with response to the uh, intensity of the stimulus. So what we will be doing today is we will try to find the movement or the orientation of behavior of a particular group of and belonging to crustacean or the wood flies, very tiny little beautiful soft animals that we usually find in the garden, provided with water properly. Then uh, we will try to give two conditions to this particular group. One is the dry conditions and one is the wet conditions, and we we'll try to find out whether the movement of the animal is more towards the dry conditions or the wet conditions. We know from the conceptual study that an animal will try to move faster or will try to orient more quickly in the dry conditions because for this animal, dry condition is not an ambient condition. So, in order to explore and find out the ambient condition, which is the wet conditions, Humid conditions, an animal will tend to move more quickly. So, if the animal is moving quickly, more quickly, faster, then the chances of getting the wet condition here or the advantageous environmental condition is more. For example, if you allow me to sell something in this room and I move very, very slowly, I may not be stumbling upon the important opportunity that I should be getting. But if I move a little bit fast, then I will be able to explore more and will try to find out the conditions which I am looking for. So in this particular context, we will uh, try to uh, see how this particular experiment is conducted in the laboratory in order to see this particular behavior. Let's see how do we do in the laboratory conditions. In the laboratory conditions, uh, we in the laboratory conditions, uh, we have this simple the instruments with us. I have this uh, one, two, three, four. These are connected from the petrol disc boxes. These are the petrol discs. One is actually coming under, so you take it out one, and this is the second pair of the petrol disc. So the lower portion of the petrol disc of this one and lower portion of this one are the same size. So will be used together to make one chamber which is dry and the upper portion of the cover of the petrodis and the cover of the petrodis of this particular pier they don't go inside each other so we'll be keeping this for making the wet chamber so what we will do is so these are the two of the environmental conditions that we are trying to make so let's say this is uh, going to be the dry conditions and this is going to be the wet conditions so how do we make the dry and wet conditions in the laboratory so i have a beaker which already has distilled water in it with the help of this uh, cotton uh, we'll make a cotton swab so please try to make it like this okay and what i do is i make i spread this cotton swab in this particular chamber so don't flood it but make it wet by not flooding the beaker as we already know that this particular animal is a crustacean and uh, crustaceans usually respire with the help of the gills uh, so they, they need a wet conditions here this particular animal is subterranean in nature it's terrestrial no doubt but the evolutionary you know, the pressure and the kind of phylogenetic if we do it, it still has many characters which are similar with those crustaceans which lives in Ubuda. So uh, what I do is I make this particular container or the, uh, this, uh, this particular environmental conditions what I am going to do is to make it as wet as possible. 
so after making it wet so uh, and also one more thing is that when we spread the cotton swab it should be sprayed uniformly so that every corner of this particular chamber is exposed to wet conditions at the same time you are not supposed to make a mountain out of it because I am going to cover this with a muslin cloth and this muslin cloth should not be touching the wet cotton swab which is here so I put it here like this and then with the help of the rubber band so you can cover this you can you can tighten this oh. so we have so when you are doing this practically in the laboratory you can make a pair of you can make a group among yourself so it's better two of you do together so one can hold the petri dish from the lower portions and uh, one can try okay, tying this particular petri dish like this yeah it's coming good then you make the muslin cloth straight there is no wrinkle or wrinkle should not be there it will be an impediment to the movement of the animal when you release this animal on top of this muslin cloth there should not be any hindrance so we'll try to create the environment in such a manner that this particular condition makes the animal comfortable or for example is uniformly spread out the humidity is you know, maintained and we'll try to see the animal is moving here and there animal may stop moving if you make a barrier so if you make a lot of ruggedness and a wrinkle it may be an impediment to its movement so make it very very plain and you now cover this petritus so this is a wet chamber so we will wait it for example say 15 minutes or 10 minutes so that the humidity in this particular chamber is good enough the animal is uh, not going to be moving very very fast or they would be rather very slow and comfortable uh, when it is in wet conditions when they get their ambient environmental conditions what about this particular chamber this particular chamber we will try to make it as dry uh, or much drier than this one so we have the pellets of potassium hydroxide koh right the caustic potash so with the help of this spatula you can collect the then you can collect around say 10 15 20 of them should not be and when we expose this particular animal in dry conditions please remember don't keep it for long time because it may help in desiccating the animals the body is very soft and uh, it's not a good condition for them that we know from the theoretical study here we are trying to prove it to be true so you collect another muslin cloth and try to cover it here care should be taken not to form any wrinkles so it should be very very just do it carefully okay. Sorry. So the process will be same. It depends on how skillful you are. I know that my students are much better skilled than me. So let me try. I wish that you all are here to help me out. So, yeah, it's correct. So like it. So you place Mac oh. So after a hard labor, now it comes to the perfect. So you have put a KOH palette. You can also look at here. Sometimes the student got confused which one is the dry and which one is the wet. So one round of checking is you can see see the KOH palette started melting here. Now on top of this, you keep the cover. So let it settle for another 10 15 minutes. So what we are doing is we are trying to create two conditions, one is wet and one is dry.
so when a particular animal is moving okay, and the movement or the orientation of the animal if it is increase or decrease corresponding to the increase in the intensity of the stimulus then it is called as a kinesics or a kinetic movement the opposite of which is called as a texas movement where the movement will be towards a particular stimulus or away from the particular stimulus yes we don't have the wood lights right now so i collected these plastic bits let us imagine that each of the plastic bits represents a wood lice. Wood lice are usually found in the subterranean. If you happen to go to the forest and you dug out the floor of the forest, you take out the debris and the leaf litters, you will find this a lot. And this is also the perfect time where you can see this particular animal moving here and there. So they are not liking to expose themselves to the dry conditions. They always want to occupy wet conditions. So suppose for example, we will collect the wood lice from the field and we'll be collecting in a particular container and sprinkle them with uh, leaf litter so that they, 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 are, they are acclimatized and they are adapted to this particular conditions, okay, whether it is a temporary or so. So what I will do is we will request the student to collect this particular wood lice with the help of the paper spatula. So you can make a, uh, we can make a paper you know, spatula and then you can collect it. So what I will do is suppose this is that particular okay, spatula to make it. You can also collect with the help of the hand but care should be taken very very much because this particular animal can be punctured if you press it. They may uh, got injured or otherwise if your hand is very very dry it is not comfortable for this animal so after settling down this animal I collect one and then suppose for example this particular conditions has already passed 10 15 minutes then what I will do is I will be collecting this particular uh, wood lice okay 10 each of them okay, 10 suppose for example there are 10 of this particular animal you collect in a small beaker or the test tube then after collecting 10 of them you please release it in this chamber very quickly okay the animal has a chance to move here and there so like this I'm going to put one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so ten of the one that I collect with the help of a beaker can I get that bigger okay. slightly bigger uh, anyway uh, it's okay so uh, now let us imagine that you are collecting this particular uh, animals in the beaker. Yes, yes. If I can get it, it will be better. So I collect ten of them in a beaker. Then very quickly you have to open and put it down and do it like this. This is slightly bigger one, and water has already been accumulated, but it doesn't matter. Uh, in, uh, in your experiment it should be done by cleaning this beaker okay very very dry okay so 10 of them should be kept here and same is the case you collect one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so 10 of this animal i collect and keep in this beaker same is the okay, procedure that you have done in the dry conditions. So you please quickly open it. So one of your friends will be opening and you just release this animal here. Okay? This is a plastic bit so it's not coming but it will be surely coming when you're working with a real model animal. So these are the 10 of these speakers and quickly you cover it. Let it settle for another, say for example, five, six minutes. After that, you started counting how many of them are moving, how many of them are not moving. Remember, after the end of this particular experiment, so after every two minutes, you will be observing. So after taking 10 observations, I'm sure that you will be finding this particular animal congregating in one of this area or near the edge of the beaker because they try to touch upon. Uh, something that makes that it's a boundary kind of a thing so you will find that this particular animals will be congregating in one corner or near the edge and you see all of them very stably very comfortably they're not moving here and there 
But in this particular case, the movement of the animal is very fast. Okay? They will be moving here and there very, very quickly. Why are they moving quickly and why are they not moving quickly? Why are they moving very slowly? The answer is, in the case of the wood lice, the dry condition is not an ambient and comfortable environment for them. So the habitat which they want to occupy is the habitat which is uh, humid enough, which is uh, not very sunny, not exposed to the dry and heat conditions. So that, that, that's the kind of a things that we want to uh, see. So what we find here is the movement of the animal is increasing as and when the intensity, that is the dryness increases. Right? So when this particular humidity increases, the movement becomes slower. So this experiment can also be done by making a particular chamber. So usually in some laboratories what we find here is you make a very big petri dish and you map the uh, barriers in between. For example, there is one particular section, another section and each of these sections are not, okay, not uh, open to each other. But in the center there is a particular area which is open. That means from the center you can go to the wet condition, you can go to the lighter condition, dark conditions or the dry conditions. So you can have four of the chamber and you can find out in which particular chamber do you find the animals more congregated. So here is